Hello family, it's Ariana, your Tarot Life Coach, bringing you your December 2020 Tarot Scope. Guys, we made it to 2020. We're finishing, we're rounding it off. Woo! <laughs> so with that being said, I want to take a moment and I want to say thank you to everybody who supported me this year, not just on the channel, but um, with all your kind words and your love. I know many of us have experienced loss. I'm not the only one, but I want to tell you it means so much to me to have a community and a family like you guys to love and support me during these really hard times for me and my family. So thank you. Big, big hugs. You know I love you guys. <laughs> big, big hugs. Lots and lots of love. High fives, guys, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs because we're going to need it to finish this year off. So let's talk a little bit astrologically what's going on. On the first, we're starting it off Big Willie style, okay? Mercury enters into Sagittarius. What does that mean? Communication might be about travel, foreign events, things of that nature, but we're going to be talking, baby. On the 14th, okay? The 14th, we have a new moon total solar eclipse, 23 degrees Sagittarius. And I'm going to talk about what the number 23 signifies as we move forward. Now, if you remember, on the 30th of November, we had a full moon partial lunar eclipse in Gemini. But it had a lot of Neptunian energy, so there was a lot of things that were being kept from us, things of that nature, like we didn't have the full story. Well, be prepared because we're going to get the full story, right? On a global level and on a personal level, you're going to get what you've been asking for. Now, the 15th, Venus enters into Sag. I kind of feel like with the planet of love, travel, money, like we're going to be wanting to do big things. We're going to want to be expressing our love. It's going to be beautiful. And Chiron goes direct in Aries, and Chiron is known as the wounded healer. Aries is very much head energy. I feel like we're going to be facing things head on with the 2020 vision that we received this year. We learned a lot about ourselves. We learned a lot about others. We've had plenty of time to do a lot of learning. <laughs> on the 17th, important day. Saturn enters into Aquarius. We are entering into the age of Aquarius. So we had a lot of Capricorn energy last year, a lot of structures changing, a lot of things, or 2020, but a lot of things coming to an end, right? We were seeing things fall apart. Well, now we're coming together with the energy of Aquarius. We want to help each other. We want to unite. We want to be strong. And on the 19th, Jupiter goes in there and meets up with Saturn. He's like, what's up? Let's make it happen. Let's enhance what we did last year, right? Now, coming into this on the 21st, happy birthday, Capricorn. The sun is in your, in your area. And this is a huge day. The sun and Jupiter are at zero degrees conjunct. What does zero signify in the tarot? The fool. We're ready to embark on a new adventure. And it's the winter solstice. So celebrate, 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 right? And of course, on the 25th, many who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas, whatever it is that you celebrate, guys, take a moment, celebrate it, honor it, honor your family, honor your ancestors, just take a moment because we're going on a ride. <laughs> and on the 29th, we have a full moon in Cancer, okay, eight degrees. So talking about the number 23, right? Because I'm going to tell you, like I do a lot of personal readings and a lot of online readings, and the number 23 was coming up a lot, especially this whole um, full moon in Sag was coming up for a lot of like information for clients that's going to come through for like people who are getting readings. The number 23 is very significant, right? Not just because of well, if you break the number down to equal five, it means change, but this is freedom, the number of freedom, right? We are craving freedom. We are craving change in partnerships, relationships, contracts, dualities, anything that pertains to the number two. And three is all about excitement, something new. We're just ready for something new. And so 23 signifies freedom. And so this year, we're getting our freedom from 2020. <laughs> so with that being said, thank you. Thank you, guys. We've been doing this for a long time. I'm going to get emotional. I'm going to try not to, but I am very, very emotional today. I just left my dad's and <sighs> very important things happened over Thanksgiving for me and it has been a journey. So yeah, these readings are going to be late. Be patient. Be kind. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I like to do a pick a card. Overall energy. What does December hold for you? So, oh, I got them all upside down and stuff. Okay, let's see here. Will it be one? Or will it be two? 
So if you chose card number one, you have that of manifestation. In this deck, it comes down to the number 19. 19 is telling you, you got something new coming in because it comes to a 10, which comes to a one. And it's all about you. What are you manifesting? What are you creating? This is the wizard. This is that alchemic process. What can you turn to gold this year? What can you take and make the best out of from 2020? as you move forward. So start thinking about what do you want to manifest this month and how are you going to do that? Now, if you chose purification, it comes down to the number 23. I'm telling you, you are longing for freedom. 23, purification. Yes, it's time to do a deep cleansing, a deep clearing. Don't wait for the new year. Do it now. Start now. Little bitty things. Get rid of items that you don't need. People, that you no longer serve a purpose in your life, who bring a lot of pain and sorrow, who make you feel bad about yourself, this might be the year that they're not coming into 2021 with you because you, you've seen and you've learned and you're starting to value yourself. But this is a purifying your mind, your body, and your soul. And when I look into this, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a person in there, right? There's a person in the water. I don't know if you can see it. And it's almost like a very healing energy. It's a very, very healing energy. And this is just time to clear. And there's a lot of blue here. So maybe we're clearing our throat chakra to express what we no longer want and need coming into 2021 with you. Now, the 2021 reads are intense. So if you're ordering one, order it now. What I do is I take your birthday into consideration. I look at your theme. I look at your numbers. I look at what's going on. I give you month by month astrological updates with tarot. Then we look at your mind, your body, your soul. And I'll, I'm offering them in a six month and a 12 month. So if the six month is 111, 11, and the 12 month is 222, 22. Now, depending on what you want is what you're going to get, but you all get the theme. You get that body, the mind, the body, the soul. You get a lot of stuff. There's like a, it's like a whole monthly read for every month, okay? Personalized to you. So, thank you guys. We will end this year together. I love you so very much. You are my family. You are everything. I mean it when I say I love getting messages from you. I try to respond as much as I can. So, have yourself a happy holiday. From my heart to your heart, from my family to your family, I wish you nothing but blessings and joy. And we're going to be bringing in 2021 together again. Love you. Good morning, Libra. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you are doing wonderful. Today is December 6th, I think. Yes, I think it's the 6th. <laughs> I woke up and I wanted to finish off these reads. I apologize for my voice. I have been feeling a little under the weather. So if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to give you a little rundown about how these reads are going to go. We're going to talk about your theme this month. We're going to go into your mind, body, and soul. Hit up the tarot. Look at love. Look at health. Look at your crystal. And look at how the lessons of 2020 were for you. All right? Now... We have here being decisive and making a choice. And I feel like when I see the choice card and she's looking at be decisive, I feel like there's something that you're going to change your mind about and that's okay. So a lot of times people are like, well, you didn't say that the other day. Well, I didn't have time to think about it. So I feel like before you respond to anything, be sure that you've taken your time. Even if you have to say, let me get back to you on that. Let me reread that. I need to read that again. Just to, just so when you give your word that you are giving your word very strongly and you don't have to go back on it. All right. Now, with that being said, your mind card or what's ruling your mind, who's bringing you energy is the beautiful bee. Okay. This is the ultimate degree of fertility. B is coming in for, to help you examine your productivity. Are you being fertile? Or are you being a busybody? Are you working towards what you truly desire? Now, with the communication, it brings in good luck and love, encourages healthy communication with the family, especially the queen bee. Teamwork is going to be necessary this month, and in Egypt, it's a symbol of royalty and power, okay? Believed to come from the tears of Ra. Krishna, the Hindu god, when the bee would come from the lotus flower, was reincarnation. I did not know that. That's in my notes. So... With that being right by the lotus flower, there are some of y'all working with the energy of Krishna, okay? And there are others of you who are going to have something that you thought was done and over, be resurrected and brought back, okay? Not a person, I'm just saying like a situation. Now, 
If a bee lands on you on your hand, money is coming, and if it lands on your feet, you are about to rise to greatness. The funny thing is with the bee, I just thought about like when we were putting my mother's ashes in um, with her mother and father over Thanksgiving. Um, one of I had a few land on me, you know, and so it just made me think about being really sweet and kind to everybody and loving, and that that was her way of saying we support you and we love you. So this is also about your service to the to the world. What is your service? Beehives are built according to sacred geometry. So there's also something with sacred geometry. You see the flower of life behind here? And when this when this energy is coming to you is to find joy in all things, all right? Especially at home and in the workplace. And for some, that is the same place right now. <laughs> now, the oracle of the seven energies is in the center of the deck right now. It's in the center of your read for your physicality. Now, this beautiful card right here, these are amazing cards. I did an unboxing on Instagram. You should go and check it out. It's so much fun. You should be following me there. It's at Ariana Luciano. Now, this is a burst of magic, and 48 comes down to the number 12, which comes down to a 3. But let's look at the energy of 48. 4 is that of the 4th house, right? 4 is anything that has the 4 walls. It's your home. It's your body. It's feeling centered. It's your foundation. But we need to talk because 8 is about communication. It's about travel. We need to talk about what we're opening up to and how we're opening up because this lotus flower is opening up to the sun, okay? You may have an epiphany, you might just have like an, a thought, an idea that's going to pop into your head, a gift given to you, power is coming, things that light you up, I feel like you're really going to light up and there's a lot with sun energy, so thinking about your solar plexus during this month as you're being decisive and moving forward so that you have the confidence to engage yourself in things of higher reasoning. Don't don't pay attention or don't give so much energy to things that drain you. We are working on confidence, joy, and moving forward with courage, okay? Now, when it comes to the soul level, you have the Ark of the Covenant, which is a major card in the um, Akashic Tarot. When this card comes out, it represents like a legal contract, maybe a title transfer is coming through, successful work. A lot of contracts are coming through for you right now, okay? A karmic contract may be coming to an end also, meaning you did your part and you are free and you're ready to go forward. Don't let yourself get pulled into other people's drama and I feel like that's why the bee has showed up. It's just like be courageous and move forward, all right? So as I'm looking at this, 48, 11, 11 is a very powerful number, right? And as we look at that sacred number and you're dealing with sacred geometry, I also wanna tell you that 11 comes down to a two. This is in your partnerships, your relationships, especially contracts. And I feel like there was something you thought that was done that is going to come back and benefit you. And I'm getting finances are really going to be good this month, okay? And let's cut this deck and see what we got going on. So it is the end of a financial situation. More than likely you or someone you're dealing with, I was looking behind it, is saying, oh my goodness, everything's okay. Like, we're finally okay. Everything's going well. With that King of Cups energy coming through, looking at the Five of Pentacles reverse, I feel like you really have worked on the way that you react to things and the way that you talk about stuff. Because the King of Cups energy is a very kind, it's a kind energy in this deck. So, of course, we can go with the basic meaning, but I am a reader who likes to look at the card. If the cards don't look and feel nice, it ain't nice. I also feel that you have witnessed some kind of like argument or disagreement and someone might be calling for you, okay, to come and to come and like speak and give your account of what happened, okay? Let's see here, we got a two. So again, partnerships, relationships, polarity, duality, those kinds of things are coming through for you this month. So four pentacles reversed, the tower reversed. Look at that, lots of home stuff. Three of Cups reversed, Ten of Pentacles, all right? And we have the Ace of Pentacles reversed with the King of Cups. So let me move this over. There we go, because I'm not about to move all the cards. There we go. Let's go. Let's do it like that. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I'm going to look at the bottom of the deck and see what we got going on. Okay? There was a situation like the Nine of Pentacles is coming out at the bottom. Okay, it's reversed. Signifying like... 
I feel like you're doing something by yourself right now. You're trying to heal from a situation. You were very decisive about it. You're like, look, I can do better by myself, but I'm going to have to rebuild myself, okay? And then you're, you're reversed. So I feel like it was an unjust situation. However, whatever that unjust situation is or was, you are done with it. You're cutting it off and you're not engaging. You are taking your investments. You are taking your time and your energy, and you're going to heal. You're going to rest. You're going to take some time out. There is an offer coming in, a young man, or look like this is father, son, father, daughter, something of that nature. There's something coming in where you're going to be learning new skills. Maybe it's a family business. I also feel like people have been watching your work and really liking it and thinking, oh, wow, she's super cool or he's super cool. We should put him on the team. Okay. Now, the four of cups with the three of swords. I feel like you're walking away from a very painful situation, but just because you've walked away doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. So a lot of people are always like, oh, well, that I'm not in that anymore, and da 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 You know, and that's cool and everything, but we always have to deal with the energies that are there because energy just doesn't go away. We have to transmute it. So when we're angry, we can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna get over it. Well, let's transmute that energy. Let's change this energy. How can we change it? Oh, well, I'm really mad. I need to get this out of me. So you know what? I really need to clean my house. I'm gonna clean my house. I'm gonna put some music on. I'm gonna lift my spirit, okay? And so you transmute that energy and that's alchemy. Now, the four of pentacles, which is looking at me, it's in the past. I kind of feel like the foundation of the house, the foundation of what you needed, it's shaken and you're like rebuilding. I really get this rebuilding sense. And I also feel like with the tower reversed in the present, it wasn't as bad as you thought it was gonna be. However, you're not celebrating. You're like, you know what? Oh, this is just so much. It could have been from a third party, meaning somebody got involved, not necessarily a cheater, okay? Something was involved. It could have been a lawyer. It could have been a coworker. And and they just put their two cents in when they didn't really have to. The advice here is the Ten of Pentacles, and that is you are complete and you have people who support you, okay? Because the eagle and the snake were friends until, until the snake went away and the eagle ate his eggs. However, in this situation, the way that the card is falling, you are completely protected and you are moving forward. And don't worry if there's a false start. A false start simply means there's a new way to make a plan, and that's why it's important to be decisive. We will look at the King of Cups energy at the end of the read. So I will be clarifying with the Light Seer's deck. The Four of Pentacles is turned upside down because I feel like this is going to go both ways. And because it felt upright, but the way that I feel about it is like you're constantly giving. Like I feel like you're constantly giving and giving and giving and helping. But who is helping you? And yes, there's some of you who do have the assistance, but it hasn't been working out that way lately. And to clarify the tower reversed, we have the four of wands reversed, okay? So now there's three, now there's two fours coming out right here, okay? So with the four of wands reversed, with the tower reversed, now in the tower situation, I want to talk about the tower card back here. So in this tower situation, that is Tiamat, okay? One of the great gods, and that is Marduk. And Marduk fought Tiamat, and because of that fight, what happened was from the pieces of Tiamat, Earth was created goes the story, right? Now, in this, you see like a house divided, right? It's a house divided. And I feel like some of y'all's houses were divided, right? And now you're like, okay, I'm rebuilding. I really get a sense of rebuilding. Make sure that the people that you let near you are those that are going to recipro reciprocate your energy. Okay, so let's look at that three of cups. Three of cups, which card is it going to be? All right, should it be this one? Nine of cups. You know what? I'm going to use all of them. Should this be upright? Should this be upright? So I get, it's a nightmare. Like for some, you're just like, ah. Oh. And no, you may not be crying at night or whatever, but it's a nightmare. And I feel like, wait, hold on. I have like the king of swords upright. The queen of cups should not be upright. Okay, so I feel like somebody is being emotionally manipulated with the energy of the queen of cups reversed and the king of swords falling out. I'm going to look at the bottom of the deck. There's Emperor Energy here, so I could feel like this could be a, a work situation. This could also be a situation where you just don't want to talk to a family member. You don't want to talk about it anymore. You're like, every time we talk about it, it's too much. Like, you always want to argue with me, and I don't want to do this with you anymore. And you see how he's looking at the Six of Pentacles, and she's just like, oh, where's, where's my help? Where's my money? Where's it at? 
you know, and it's tied to this energy over here. Now, there's two kings in your reading. So for some of you, you will be getting a promotion at work or recognition. What's really sticking out to me is that owl for some reason more than anything. And it's making me think about, y'all ever seen a picture of the harpy eagle? You need to look it up. It's like freaking scary, but it's so beautiful. But <laughs> the vibe that I'm getting here is like ancestral messages. I feel like your guides are really talking to you. They're warning you about a situation. Um, just making sure that when you when you're doing stuff, you're you're talking to your higher self and to your higher power. Hold on, there is a soul contract that is coming to an end. All right, a soul contract has come to an end. It could be with a friend, it could be with a lover, it could be with a with a partner. But in this situation, you have learned all that you can learn, and that's why there's no reciprocity. I can't even talk. They ain't nobody giving back to you, baby. It's too early for me. <laughs> And so it feels like in this situation, like you're like, I have, I have engaged, I have paid, I have done, and you know what? I can't do this anymore. So this, this contract is something that is ending, okay? I'm going to pull a card for the Queen of Cups. What does the Queen of Cups want you to know? Queen of Cups is trying to be, let's see, it comes down to the number 88. I mean, 44, which comes down to an eight. The communication isn't there. I feel like it's very manipulative. This thinker card is like, she's overthinking it. She's like, okay, how do I do this? How do I get what I want? I want this, I want that. Um, if you're not coming to my house for the holidays, then forget you. Why didn't you send me the money for this? It's like very, um, it's not kind, okay? And I feel like you've tried your best, or this is vice versa, Libra. Remember, these reads can always go two ways. You've tried your best, and you've attempted to make this happen, but it's just not working out. And it doesn't have to mean that this person is an asshole or anything, but it just means that the contract is over, and that it's going to be very important for you to be decisive as you move forward in this relationship or partnership. Ten of Pentacles, what do you have for us? It's like, in order to feel complete, free yourself. Free yourself and the rest will follow right in vogue so in this situation you felt like you were tied to it the eight of swords is also that significant to a soulmate energy that it's just time to go it's over and you're free you're no longer that person you used to be the song that's coming to my mind is michael jackson um something about the man in the mirror yeah, I'm starting with the man in the mirror because that's the only person that can change, right? We can't change other people, but we can change our behaviors, our reactions, and the way that we move through life. And this is where you realize how free you really are. So with the Ace of Pentacles being reversed, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take my money back. I feel like you're going to take your money back and you're going to invest in the best. And that's you. You're investing in yourself. You're like, you know what? I can't do this with you. I love you. In a, in a nice, you know, in a, in a kind of different way. Not like I'm in love with you because I don't feel love here. I do feel like, you know what, I care about you. Maybe we have kids together, but I can't do this with you. And so I'm going to pull myself out of this situation. I'm no longer invest my time, my energy, and my money into this. And I'm going to take my coin back. And when I plant my coin, I'm going to watch my trees grow. I'm going to watch my stuff grow. Okay, very Taurus-like energy coming through here. So when I look at this King of Cups, right... Ah, King of Cups, Apsu. Let me tell you a little story about Apsu, okay? Apsu was an old god during this time, and so Apsu, like, got really mad, right? He was like, okay, look, y'all being a little too loud. And so he goes and tells Tiamat, Tiamat, you better tell your children to be quiet, okay? If you don't get them quiet, I'm about to get them, right? So Tiamat's like, okay, okay, whatever, you know? And he had planned to kill his kids. So in his sleep, he was murdered, okay? So Tiamat gets mad at Marduk. And then that is how the world is created. So there could have been a situation where somebody said, "I really, not that they want to kill somebody, I'm really tired of this, they're turned into an argument, and that is how these new worlds are being created for you. Having to rebuild, find a new home, find a new place to live, those kinds of things. But, let's see, should this be upright? The King of Cups is facing a lot of outside conflict. I kind of feel like that's you. I feel like you are like the King of Cups right now, meaning like you're just like, look, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to go to bed and hopefully tomorrow's better. But it's like there is an energy, possibly the Queen of Cups reversed, coming at you, coming at you constantly. And it does not matter if there's Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. This is manipulative energy and you have to stand in your king shit. You cannot let that stuff get to you because if you do, then you will tie yourself to this situation. All right. Because you're like, no, I got to get out. Like I'm doing this and I'm getting out. I'm finding a way because I'm about to move forward because there's the wheel. OK. And with the double 10 that I just pulled 
for you. Be prepared. There's some opportunities at work that are going to come through that you thought were over, but they're going to be a blessing for you. All right, Libra. Lots of interesting energy. I kind of feel like you're tying up the year. I know that people often look to these readings for love advice, so we're going to just do a little quick love read. Just a few cards. For my singles, what's up with my single Libra? Single Libras. Where's my single Libra? Oh, Libras. What is going on for my singles? First of all, make a decision, okay? Do you want to be with somebody or do you want to be single? Like, I don't even know what you want to do right now. Because at the bottom of the deck, I have the seven of cups, right? Like, you're like, ah, I don't know. What do I want to do? Because every time I go in a relationship, my heart gets broke. Oh, poor me, poor me. You see that three of swords energy and the five of pentacles? It's like, oh. You've done this to me. It's your fault. But what, what cycle did you play in this? What part was yours, okay? Own your part. Stop blaming. Move forward. They left you out in the cold. Go build a snowman, okay? Just stop engaging. Move forward. Because the more we sit there and try to make that person see how bad they hurt us and how wrong they are, the more they're just going to shut us out, right? So we might as well go take our sexy ass somewhere else. So take your sexy ass somewhere else, sleep, or somebody else is going to want you. 28 comes, wait, 29, I need my glasses, comes down to the number 11. There was a soul contract that ended, my friend. Drum roll, please. And I feel like it was very, <laughs> very um, dramatic. It was a very dramatic breakup or a very dramatic ending. And um, drums also clear energy. And it's important that you clear the energy from this event or from this breakup or from whatever is going on. Clear, clear, clear. Get rid of stuff. Things that hold energy. People that are holding you to this because it's a very painful thing with that three of swords and five of pentacles. All right. Now, for my couples, let's see what we got over here for my couples. Let's see. Let's give me some, give me some good energy, boo. God. Okay, no, no, okay. So for my couples, I feel like I'm looking at the Princess of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles. I feel like, you know, she took her she took her staff and she's like, look, I've done a lot of work, baby. It's your turn to do some work too. And there's that King of Pentacles vibe. So at the bottom of the deck, behind it is the Two of Cups. So I do feel like you guys are talking a lot about finances and maybe how to invest your money. Like, hey, are we going to get Bitcoin? What are we going to do? <laughs> like, what the hell, bro? Are we going to invest? We need to invest. We need to go have a garden. You know, maybe this is you and your partner learning a hobby together, having fun. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, she's done. She's leaving. Now, for some, I feel like you're like, look, I'm tired. You go ahead and finish this work, and I need more help on your end. With that double, se double seven of pentacles right there for the couples, what I'm kind of feeling is like investment, investment, investment. Okay? La dama. So act like a lady, okay? Be a lady. Be his lady. Get dressed up. You are the lady, okay? Don't let someone come in to the situation, all right? This could be even you teaching your children on how to run the family business, on how to become an entrepreneur. This is like you guys investing in the family, okay? Maybe your kids are resisting it. I also feel that it's time for you to dress up and go out and have fun, all right? Have a little bit of fun. So let's go ahead and close up this read. Your ancestry message this month is insects. And remember you had the B. And it's so crazy when my cards do this, y'all, because I... I, got, I was so late last night, it was like 2 in the morning, and I had been reading cards since 10 a.m., and I finished at 2, and I was exhausted, so I got the cards ready, and so when I saw the B, I was like, oh, that's interesting, and then this was the last card that fell out, and I was like, oh my gosh, all these insects, so when this happens, when there's a lot of insects that show up for you, when I put this card on my altar one day, Trust me, we had a praying mantis. I had butterflies everywhere. It was like I was calling them in. Thank God the cockroaches didn't show up because I probably would have screamed, okay? Because I live out here in the country and we have water, those water bugs. Oh, hell to the no. Anyways, the pretty ones showed up. Praying mantis, dragonflies, butterflies, and spiders. Okay, I'm not scared of spiders. But this is significant to the spirit world offering you support, okay? Now, here's another story about Egypt. In Egypt, the humble fly was given as a gold medal for bravery, and the scarab beetle was revered for its symbolic power of eternity because it follows the sun. The Omphalus of Delphi in ancient Greece was a beehive-shaped stone thought to protect the temple. 
Native American dream catchers honor the spider medicine as it makes a web. So insects will teach you how to proceed and how to be proactive. They also help you um, get out. They also survive natural disasters. So I feel like they're saying, you know what? You've been through worse, Libra. You got this. You got this. You're going to come out on top, okay? This is teamwork, finding your community. And don't let your light fade during this time. You are protected. You're supported and you're safe. Go with it. Be careful not to let those negative thoughts or those words overpower you okay affirmations are going to be very powerful for you this month okay now when it comes to your health there's the beautiful Sun I stop oh my goodness so so pretty okay now Sun energy comes in and this is like maybe some eyesight issues pay attention to your skin you might want to look into vitamin D deficiencies if you're having depression you might want to go sit out in the Sun and could be tied to heart disease now, the herbs tied to this are carnation, chamomile, fennel, geranium, lavender, marigold, and rosemary. Rosemary is my biggest favorite. But I'm going to talk about chamomile, okay? Chamomile is great for digestion, right? So you might be encountering some digestive issues. It's also tied to the sign of Leo. So this is going to give you confidence. This makes me think of your solar plexus. And look, the children are so happy. So really paying attention to what you're feeding your children. Are you making sure that they're digesting? Is there plenty of yellow fruits and vegetables in their diet so that they can have that solar power energy also? Now, another thing chamomile is good for in magic. It's good for attract, attracting money. It's good for love. It's good for calming spells. Chamomile has a lot of beautiful energy and it can also help you get the rest that you need. So have a nice cup of chamomile tea and relax. Your crystal this month is smoky quartz. So this is a superb healer. It cleanses your energy. It also is an essential tool for healers and spiritual workers because it can clean your auric field and the things around you. It helps dissolve negative internal and external uh, nightmares. So whoever's having the nightmares, right? You can put a little bit of rosemary with... Um, with what's this crystal smoky quartz by the bed have your child uh, tell them the story of how these things are going to protect them because this is what i do with my little one and call in the energy of the smoky quartz to protect your child's dream another thing to do for nightmares is camphor you know those little squares if you don't have a dog or a cat you can put a little bit of that in some water it does not smell beautiful but it will clear the energy and place it under the bed and it will start clearing out that energy make sure that you're cleaning your children's room and if someone have given Giving them a toy I'm just going off someone's kids must be having nightmares um, if someone gave them a toy or a gift and that person has um, mal intent with them no matter how much you like it go ahead and re-gift it or give it to um, give it to a donation because that energy for your child is just like holding that energy for them okay and old toys that no longer work things of that nature clean from under the bed get the corners open the windows as you're saging or you're clearing the room say your prayers ring the bells in there and include your child in this so that they feel like they're like a ghostbuster you know and it's fun for for them. I can do that with my kids. I'd be like, come on, Ghostbusters, let's get this done, all right? Now, physically, it's just about working with your abdomen, hips, and legs, and to relieve back pain and nervous tension, all right? It's going to help you with your strengthening and functioning of your legs. Now, this card signifies that it's time to let go of past hurts and problems and open yourself up to transformation. Be ready for good things that are coming for you, Libra. Now, Ateshka is coming through for you for your lesson of 2020. Absolutely love these cards. And this is how to deal with past relationships. This is about ignition, okay? And this is located in Baku, Azerbaijan, okay? I'm probably saying it wrong. But this is the past, this is the present, and this is the potential. So, in the past, okay, this is Zoroastrian fire worship, okay? What images come to your mind now thinking about this place? Like, this was a place of worship, and fire was what they worshiped. Now, have you created a personal hell that needs the transformational power of fire? Look within the flames and let them show you what to do. What needs to be removed? Fire can transmute energy. There's candle magic. There's burning things that people do to create an energy. So a lot of people are like, why do you do these things? Well, imagery is very strong and has power. 
right? And what does a candle do? A candle lights up the darkness, right? It shows the way. So in this situation, when you're trying to burn away things, what do you want to do? You want to show yourself the way. Now, in the middle world or in the present, what of your divine spark, right? What happened to it? Does the fire of your youth still burn strongly? Are you shining bright? So Ateshka was abandoned in 1883 when the fires at the temple went out after petroleum plants were built to take up natural gas in that area. But fire is born to be free, to spread its heat and energy. Do you remember being free? Free spreading your joy? How do you feel now? Are you happy with what happened to you? Fire offers sp spiritual insight and it fuels your convictions. Where's your passion? Ask yourself now, who or what snuffed your fire? Was it the loss of a relationship that dampened your flame? Know that the fire in your heart can never really go out. It's time to rekindle and start with your own heart, right? So at the top, we have Zoroastrian, right? The religion of the ancient Persian empire based on good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Zoroastrians often often offer prayer beside fire, recognizing its ability to invigorate or to remove the old and birth the new. So when did fire become associated with hell? Why is it feared? Perhaps fear was deliberately instilled to extinguish the first true purpose. Zoroaster had a vision of a great giant, the archangel Vuhumana, good thoughts, who took him to the wise Lord and who appointed him as a prophet. Take steps towards building up your inner fire. Learn to work with it. Allow no one or nothing, neither word nor deed, to extinguish your flame. You have the right to shine. You have the right to burn brightly. And I feel like that's why the insects are showing up. They're here to support you. So as you're finishing out this year, Libra, this has been a hell of a year for you. Some of y'all went through divorce. Some of y'all lost family members. But don't let that take your spark. All right. Protect your children. I'm getting that really strongly and I don't know why it's just a message. And then I also want to let you guys know that if you're interested in a read, hit me up at arenaluciano at gmail.com or on the gram at arenaluciano. Be blessed, fam.